What's going on guys? So I've recently been uh, getting into a little bit of leather working uh, because I've been getting into slip joints. Um, and slip joint knives typically need to be carried in slips. Don't need to be, but I like to carry them in slips because uh, it protects them from being scratched against other items in my pockets. Um, also protects them from, um, I don't know, if you're like me and you're working, you get your pockets get filled with like dirt and sawdust and metal shavings and uh, this just protects uh, all that stuff from getting inside your knife, inside your pivot and all that. Um, so I like to carry my slip joints and slips. Um, so, you know, I bought a few and they're really nice, but I thought, hey, I like building things, I like making things, maybe I should give it a, give it a shot. Um, it's difficult. Um, even if you know the basics, uh, it still just takes practice to really get everything looking nice. And I'm still not uh, by any means a professional at all. I'm a beginner. Um, but I do know the steps that you need to take to make a slip. Um, and I'm getting decent at it. So I'm gonna walk you through the steps. I have a list that I've compiled of um, budget leatherworking tools that you need to get started. Um, they're not expensive. They might not be the best quality, but they're cheap and they're good. Everything on the list I have bought myself, I have in my toolbox and I have been using them. So I can tell you that they work well and um, it's everything that you need to get started, literally. Everything, nothing extra, um, everything you need to get started. So I'm gonna walk you through it step by step. Here's a slip I made for my buddy Drew. Um, there's a couple ways you can do it. You can do this kind of side fold where you fold here and then you stitch around the side and bottom. Um, that's one way. You can do this kind where you the fold is on the bottom and you do two separate stitches on, on either side. That's kind of my preferred method. Um, this is a this is a one I messed up on on the branding, um, but you get the idea. Uh, I think today we're going to do one of these. These work best. This style works best for um, slip joints, I think. Um, the bottom fold, but really anything you want to do week is fine. This is for a pry bar. Yeah, and since it was pretty thick, I decided to go with this style. And uh, it looks real nice. So today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make one of these. First, let's go through all the tools that are on that list in the description one by one. Some thread, a punch. This one here is a set of uh, four different uh, punches, different sizes. So you can kind of do a long row with these. Helps keep the spacing perfect. And then if you're going around a corner or whatever you're doing, you can use one of the, the smaller ones. These are really nice and cheap. An edge beveler, it's a tool that looks like this. And it basically just rounds off the corners of your leather. Two needles. We're gonna be doing a saddle stitch, which requires two needles. Um, in the links there, I think it's a pack of a few. Uh, leather needles are not usually sharp very much um, because you're not really piercing through the leather, you're just going through the holes that you punched. They have wide eyes and are pretty thick usually. A burnisher. After you've stitched everything together, you put some uh, burnishing uh, cream on your edges and you vigorously um, rub your edge in one of these radiuses. And that kind of helps form the edge together, get it kind of uniform and um, just more put together. If you have a drill press, or you could even do this in a hand drill, you can get one that, uh, that fits in a chuck. That way it spins much faster. It's the same thing, it's made out of wood. Just spins much faster than you can do it by hand. And here's the burnishing cream that you put on the edges before you go ahead and burnish with the, with the wood burnishing tool. It's actually called burnishing gum, not burnishing cream. But it's basically a cream, it looks like lotion. There's some other quality of life tools, like um, if you don't have a multi-row punch, you can mark out your holes with something like this. Um, there's this tool where it helps you mark out a clean, consistent um, spacing from the edge of your leather. Um, so it kind of just marks the leather so you know where to put your stitches, or your holes, I mean. Um, those are also, I think, on the list as well. I believe I put on the list this tool and this tool, but it's not necessary. You can get away without them. So today I'm making a slip for my new QSP Hedgehog here. 
really freaking love this knife. Now, first thing we need to do is uh, cut out our leather. How big do we need it to be? I know that it fits in this slip, so I'm gonna make one the same size, but say you don't have one that you're starting with, you're gonna kinda wanna lay it out in your leather. Kinda fold up. You want the whole knife to be covered. Um, you want the whole, the whole knife to be inside the, um, the, uh, the, the slip so that there's nothing sticking out that can be scratched. So, I've got it folded over. The knife is pushed down into the back here. Just barely back behind the edge. So that looks like a good length. Just get a pen. Make sure you're, if you're marking the leather, it's on the inside. You don't want to put marks on the outside, obviously. So I'll put a little mark right about there. Now keep in mind guys, I am an amateur and if you are a professional leather worker watching this and have tips for me, I, uh, I will gladly listen to those and uh, yeah, I'm still learning. So we'll measure up to that mark we just made. Looks like nine and three sixteenths. Then we'll go over, mark it again. And then three sixteenths. That way we can make um, a straight line across. You're also going to want a utility knife, utility blade. I just use one of these. We're gonna make our cut. So that's the, you know, that's the length this way we need. We got, now we need to find our, our width this way. So let's stick the knife in there again. Now you wanna have, make sure you have room on either side uh, for your stitches and you don't want it to be too tight in there. So it's a little bit of a guessing game, but you can kind of guess on this side of the, the slip, you're gonna need right around that much room for your stitches and for the leather to kind of grow out. And, um, you know, if we made the stitches really close like that, the knife would never fit inside the slip. So I like to leave, I don't know. It depends on the thickness of the knife too. This is about, I don't know, five eighths of an inch. Um, I think that's gonna work. Let's see what I made this one at. That should work. I think that's gonna be good. So, you know, kinda just make sure you have enough space on either side of your knife. I think I'm putting, this is a little awkwardly shaped because it's, it's much wider up here than it is back here. Um, so at the widest point, let's give ourselves about a quarter inch on either side. A little bit extra. So let's measure over from that. Looks like two and an eighth. So we'll go down here. Two and an eighth. Put our ruler on the lines. Make a cut. Now there's one more thing I forgot to tell you that you need, and it's this, Leathercraft cement. Um, you always wanna glue it up where it's gonna be before you go ahead and stitch it all together, or put your holes in. That way it's held together in place, um, and you're not trying to worry about keeping both sides of the leather lined up with each other as you're putting your holes in. You want them to be fixed where they're at. But first we have some edge beveling to do. This is always one of my favorite parts because it's just really satisfying. Let's get our edge 
bevel. Yeah. I have a few different sizes. Um, they're just different radius. Let's see, which one do we want? I think this is one I want to try. So I'll show you on a piece of scrap, basically what we're doing here. Say this is the edge of your, your slip. You take your tool and run it along the edge, just like that. And you can see it just takes off part of the edge. It bevels the edge. Makes it look much neater, uh, much neater and cleaner. Um, but actually, wait a minute, wait a minute. We're not quite there yet because we still need to, and you don't have to do this. You could have a square corner here, but I like to have my top corners rounded. I like to, I like to round both these corners, leave these corners um, square. So what I've done is I find something that's round. This seems to work well for me. And I just place it on the edge. Like a so. Hold it down real tight. And just cut around it. There you go, perfect. Same on the other side. Perfect. Two more. There we go. Perfectico. Now we've got nice rounded corners. Now we can go around and bevel the whole thing. Whoops. Going around the corners can be a little tricky. Just go slow. There we go. Now, um, I'm gonna mark where my stitching is gonna stop. I like to stop my stitches right back here, not all the way up to the top. That way when you're getting the knife out, you can pull these back and grab the knife and pull it out. That's just how I like to do it. You can put yours all the way to the top if you want to. That's just how I like to do it. So um, I need to mark where my stitching is gonna stop. That way I can know where not to put glue. So let us mark this out. Okay, I think I want my stitching to stop. About right there. A little line either side. Actually, you know what? Let's go one in the middle too. That way we can measure down. Let's see, it's about three quarters of an inch. And on this side, we can go down three quarters of an inch as well. Mark this side. Uh, now something that's helpful, not necessary, but I would recommend getting some of these. I would get around four or so of some kind of clamp. This is what I get that worked well for me. After you glue it, you need to uh, have some way to clamp it down. This stuff does dry really quick, it seems like, so you could just hold it with your fingers for a few minutes. But especially like back here, where it wants to separate, it's nice to have a clamp back here.
So you don't need much of this stuff at all. I made the mistake uh, up until very recently of putting too much of this stuff on. And um, what happens is it squeezes out the edges and then when you go to burnish them with the burnishing gum, uh, those areas where the, the, uh, the glue seeped through, they never really look quite as, like they should. Use our finger, kind of spread it around. So it's really not much. It does dry quickly, so you don't need to rush, but I wouldn't leave it sitting on the table, obviously, at this point. Make sure everything lines up nicely. down here. A little overlap here because the other side is pretty flush but this one's overlapping a little bit that's okay I can go back after the glue is dry and trim that up a little bit so we're gonna let that sit and dry for it only takes about five minutes so we'll come back all right taking our clamps off that was seriously only like two three minutes so if you don't if you put the right amount which is not too much very quickly dries so we gotta trim off a little bit there. And this is kind of what I mean about having um, experience is, you know, uh, the more you do it, the less this will happen. Uh, you know what I mean? Like you'll just, that, that won't happen <laughs> if you're very skilled. Um, so I think the best way to trim this is probably with the ruler. That way we don't make a yucky line. even up there either. Let's see. Yeah, that's decent. Everything else looks pretty good. If it's not perfect, uh, it will be okay because when we go to burnish it with the, with the gum and the burnishing tool, it kind of all blends in together. It just needs to be relatively close. So since we trimmed off that little bit, I'm going to use the beveler again because we kind of cut off that bevel. There we go. All right. Now, here's where the marking tool comes in handy is this tool. It's on the list. Um, this is kind of your, your gate or your guide. It rides along the edge of the leather. And this thing, it's not sharp, but it's got a, a small radius on it. Um, and it kind of just digs into the leather and creates a line for you to follow when you're marking your stitching or putting in your stitching. I think that's a good spacing. You could might probably go a little bit in this. Let's see. No, I think that'll be good. I think that'll be good. So let's see, which side do I want to be the front? I got the most beautiful side for the front. That side looks good. See how it just puts a very faint line in there? 
for you to follow. If you don't do that, things like this can happen where you kind of wander off a little bit. That's why I'm making a new one is because this is one is uh, this is a practice one that I, I messed up on. So we got our little lines marked out where we want our holes. Let's grab our punches and go over to the anvil. You don't need an anvil, but since I have one, it's pretty handy. Just get a block of wood. Let's see, where am I gonna put the camera? Uh, can I do this? Not a great view. But basically, we're just gonna come in here. We're gonna remember, we're gonna start them a little bit down from the, uh, from the curve, because I wanna be able to get my fingers in there to get the knife out. So we're gonna start there, punch, following this line that we made. Go down, punch, go down, punch. That's pretty much it. Let me see if I can get a better view here. Let's see, what if I... Hi, Floki. You meeting your pigs here? Meet your pigs here, buddy. Okay, that's a little better. I usually go until it's poking out the other side about that much. You wanna make sure they're, they're pretty decently in there so that you have good size hole all the way through. There's the next line. Now I think I wanna go one more further down. I could get my single punch, or I could just reuse all these holes except for maybe two, maybe I'll do two. No, I think I want one. So you can put these back in the old holes and leave one overhanging. See what I mean? That way you still are keeping your good spacing. There's one side done. Nice and even. Let's do the other way, the other side. There we go. Now we're ready to stitch it together. I have a little bench vise here with uh, just pieces of leather that I've zip tied on the jaws. That way I can clamp uh, any kind of delicate material in here that I don't want to be gouged by the jaws. Leather, little pieces of metal that I'm buffing, whatever it is. So we're gonna be doing a saddle stitch, which um, I'm gonna do my best to explain. Um, 
really the best way to learn is just to, to do it. Um, just go for it, uh, maybe on a practice piece. Um, or you can look up other videos um, of somebody explaining a saddle stitch better than I will. Um, but I will demonstrate. So I usually start at the bottom and then end my stitch down at the bottom of the slip. So I got two needles on either side of my thread. They're not tied onto the ends, they're just looped on there. On one piece. So let me go through the first hole. Even it out. You're gonna take the front, I call this, the, this is gonna be the front needle because it's the front of the slip. And this is gonna be the back needle, it's the back of the slip. So we're gonna go through the front into the next hole. Like that. Then we're gonna take our other needle and go in that same hole that the other needle just came out of. Pull it tight, and there you go. Now we're just gonna repeat that same exact thing on down the line. If you just watch, hopefully you will kind of uh, get the rhythm of it, I'm hoping. But like I said, if I'm not explaining this well enough, <laughs> go find a better video on, uh, on the Sahel stitch. In the next hole, back through the same hole that one just came out of with the other needle. Pull it tight. In through the front with the first needle. In through that same hole we just came out of with the second needle. Pull it tight. In through the front with the first needle. Back through the same hole we just came out of with the second needle. Pull it tight. It's that, it's that same thing just repeated. In the front, the first needle. Back through the same hole we just came out of with the second needle. Pull it tight. So this is creating um, basically a double stitch, but we only have to go down once. You could go just a regular stitch every other one all the way and then go back, but that's just a hassle. And um, this is just way easier. You see we have full double stitch on both sides. So that's what that's creating. I'll do a time-lapse. Actually, I'll finish this one side, then I'll do a time-lapse for the next side. Um, that way you don't have to watch the whole thing. But maybe watching it will help you get an idea of how to do it.
All right, we're getting close to the end here. I'm still not quite certain on the best way to end the stitching, um, but I have this way that I do it, and I haven't, gosh, and I haven't had a slip come apart yet or unstitch itself at all, so I guess I'm doing it right. But if anyone watching has a better way, let me know. Last one. All right, so we're at the very last one. Now what I do is basically just the same thing we have been doing, but I go back one. So go back one. Same thing, go back through that hole we just came out of with the other needle. But except we're just going backwards one, one time, basically. Then I go back through, wait, which side is the front? That's it, it's the front. Then I go back through, wait, no, that's the back, okay. Then I go back through so that both threads are on the same side. And then I can take my needles off, pull that tight. And we'll trim them along for now. Um, after I get the other side done, I'll show you. We're gonna cut them short and then burn with a lighter and then uh, that'll keep it nice and sealed off. All right, time lapse for the other side. All right, we've got both sides stitched. We're looking pretty good. Um, left a little bit extra here. So what we're gonna do, make sure they're pulled tight and then trim them, leaving, I don't know, eighth inch or so sticking out. And you're gonna come in with a lighter, burn those tips and then kind of just mush them down. Oops, I wasn't even in the camera, in the frame, sorry. Just held up the lighter kind of to the side until you could see the ends melting and then just push them down. And that, they should never come out uh, again. It's worked for me so far. I've never had one come loose, but if you're an expert and you're seeing I'm doing it wrong, let me know. So this is looking pretty good. We got to burnish the edges. That'll help everything really come together. Um, but you can see how experience is really gonna make things look better. Like for instance here, um, this stitch is a little bit too wide. Uh, that was in between, you know, when I moved my um, my punch from you know one set to the next, I kind of left too big of a space in between the two. Um, not super noticeable, but you can tell that that's a bigger stitch. Um, Little things like that, um, just as you become a better leather worker, leather smith, <laughs> whatever it is, stuff like that you'll get better at. So, um, you know, one thing I forgot to do is uh, Richter Knives gave me this really cool uh, duty punch, the D for duty, or Drew, or whatever your name is, but. I'm putting it on here because my name's Duty. I probably should have done this while before it was stitched while it was a single layer, but I think it'll be all right. I think I'm just gonna put it right there, smack a dab. Should I do it lower? No, I think I'm gonna do it about right there. So let's go back to the anvil. Actually, I'll just do it real quick and be right back.
Nice. That looks pretty darn good. You can get really fancy with a lot of different tools. Um, he gave me some other ones. I, uh, I haven't tried on a, a legit slip yet. I did a little practice. Some practice runs, uh, but there's all kinds of punches with different textures and here's a pretty cool one. So, okay. uh, so you can get fancy with it, but I'm not, I'm not quite at that level yet. So it's burnishing time. So like I said, we have the one in my drill press, but if you don't, you're gonna use something like this. You're gonna get your, Your burnishing gum, just get a little on your finger, wipe it along the edge here, and you're just gonna vigorously do this back and forth for, uh, I don't know, 30 seconds or so until you see it kind of all molding together and looking nice. Uh, but we're gonna go over to the drill press and do it that way. By the way, if you're looking for a drill press, keep your eye on Craigslist. I got this thing for, I think like 40 bucks. And uh, it's old, it's a little tabletop one, but man, it works really good. Drilled knife blade tangs in here. I've done everything in here. So. Get some on your fingy. Don't need much. That's starting to kind of mold together. I'll get a better shot of it when I'm done. Here it is. See how the edges kind of just form together? Let me get the right light, there we go. Might be easier to tell in person, but they're not like all frayed. You don't see all the individual fibers anymore. It's kind of just almost rounded over and kind of shined up a little bit. There it is. It's not a bad looking slip for a beginner. Again, there's a lot of stuff I still have to learn. A lot of detail work that uh, I'm probably missing. Um, but practice makes perfect and it's fun. I enjoy doing it. Everything smells good. Love the smell of leather. Now, one last thing we gotta do is make sure the knife fits. Definitely done one or two of these where the knife did not fit <laughs> after I was done. 
But the good thing is, usually I have another knife, that, different knife that fits in it. But I really want to slip for this, so let's hope it works. Oh, like a freaking glove, look at that. Just barely below the very top edge. You could have, I could have made that a little deeper, but I think that's pretty darn good. Got this top unstitched so I can easily grab it. Retention is very good. Now, as you use it, um, this kind of flaps will become easier to pull down. See, this one I've been using for, I don't know, a week or so. Um, you know, the, it breaks in, the whole thing breaks in. Um, I believe this is three and a half ounces, or three and a half ounce leather, uh, which I think is a good thickness for slips. I've, I've made them out of thicker stuff and thinner stuff than this, and this seems to be a good thickness. Um, you know, it's thin enough where it, it forms to the knife, um, but it's not so thin that it feels like fragile or anything. I want to see the D on the back side a little bit. Cool. There you go, guys. Another thing is, uh, this is just natural undyed leather. When you go to order it, you can get any color you want. Or there's a lot of colors. Or you can get leather dye. But uh, I kind of prefer, at least for this kind of thing, um, I've been into just, you know, natural leather and this, let it patina as it will in my pocket. There you go, folks. Hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And um, again, if I'm doing something wrong, let me know. Watch a video from uh, a professional. But I think for a beginner, this is uh, probably a pretty good guide for getting a pretty decent looking slip. Definitely a very functional one. Love you guys. Please like the video before you head out. I love you, and I'll see you soon. Adios.